Yikes. <laughs> but what was it? Yeah, what was it? That's that's the. I don't know. I think I think Ron, you were talking about the they, the story about the guy who's dead, and and didn't like the accolades. It's like no, Satan, go away. Humility, humility. Uh, let's go ahead and pray, and we'll get started. Lord Jesus, we come before you again and just thank you so much for who you are, for our relationship in you, Lord, that you've called us to be your kids, that you love us. Lord, I don't understand because I know who I am and I know my heart is deceitfully wicked. But God, you've called us, you've chosen us, you love us, and, and Lord, your grace abounds in my life. And so, Father, as we look to this section of the conference, Lord, we want to be mindful of you, God, that you are the reason we're here. Uh, radio is a subset, but Lord, it's because we are your kids, because we love you, and because we have been called by you to proclaim your word over the airwaves. So Father, we give you this time and pray that you would speak to us by your Holy Spirit, uh, because anything I have to say will come to nothing. But Lord, what you speak to our hearts Lord, you direct us, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right, so this, this talk, we're going to talk about fostering relationships. And, and when I was sitting down, I, I told Ron, like Ron asked me if I wanted to speak, and I, and I kind of laid out, yeah, this is what I, want, I would want to share with the group. And he said, oh, well, okay, then I'll have you do two sessions. And I'm like, wait, I thought this was going to be one session. Um, because it goes so hand in hand with unity, I felt like. But then when I stopped and I sat down and I looked at what this fostering relationship is, I go, okay, now, where am I going to go? What am I going to do? And the Lord just spoke to me and said, Mark, this is who you are. This is who I am. Um, relationships mean everything to me. I remember when I was uh, heading off to college, I had a great community at Calvary Chapel and God had called me to go to Kansas to go to college. And I remember when I first got the call and said, hey, we want you to come out and play football here. And I said, oh, great, thanks. I'm not going to Kansas. And, and the coach was so persistent, really godly Christian man too. And he was so persistent. He said, I, I want you to come. I'm like, great. And, and God had spoken to me this deal of don't ever close a door that I open. Amen? Right? Um, and so my commitment to God was, I'll go through any door you open, um, and I won't kick down any that you close. And so I said, okay, I'm not going to close this door, Lord. I'll keep entertaining it, but I'm not going to Kansas. <laughs> and uh, the coach kept calling me and said, you know, come for a visit. I'll buy you a plane ticket. Just come visit the campus. And I said, okay, but I'm not going to Kansas. Didn't tell him that, of course. So I went out and flew out and saw the campus, beautiful campus in, in Lindsborg, Kansas. Um, and I get out there, all these beautiful brick buildings, neat. The coach just loved him. And uh, at the end of the weekend, he said, I want to offer you a scholarship. And I said, you haven't even seen me catch a football. And he said, no, but I know that the players who have played for me know what I expect. And because Dennis has recommended you, I know you can play. And I'm like, wow, OK. So seeing that step of faith on his part, I'm making this long story longer. Sorry, I'm going to shorten it now. But all that to say, I ended up going to Kansas, even though I said I wasn't going to go to Kansas, because God directed me to Kansas. I never had it on my radar. As deeply impacted as I had been by Christian radio, I never had it on my radar to be at K-Wave. It was never. I was a youth pastor. Right? I was a youth pastor, and then I got into title and escrow sales so I could support my habit of being a youth pastor. Um, and, and I love youth, and I still love youth, of course. Um, and so God directed everything. Uh, I love it because kids used to ask me all the time in, in a high school group, Mark, what do you do? Well, first they'd ask me, Mark, do you have summers off? Okay, kids always ask you, do you get the summer off of work? No, I don't get the summer off of work. <laughs> um, they just want to hang out. And, and then they said, what do you do? And I said, well, what I do is I drive around, because it's hard to explain title and escrow. I work with bankers and, and mortgage brokers and realtors. But I drive around, and I meet people, and I make friends, because everybody wants to do business with their friends. And that's just kind of who I am. 
Like, I was never trained formally in sales. I'm just a relationship guy. And whenever kids would ask me, you know, or, or anyone, I laugh at the question, what's the meaning of life? I'm all, really? Do you really think it's like a big house or a boat or something? The meaning of life is relationship. That's the meaning of life. We serve a relational God who sent his son so that we could have relationship with him. Life's about relationship. It has nothing to do with what you can get, what you do, the accolades you get, Nothing. It has everything to do with relationship because our God is a relatable God. Amen? We serve a relatable God. So I got a um, non-authorized translation for you of um, Ephesians 4.12. And it says, this is the non-authorized translation. And he gave some stations to be commercial stations, some to be non-coms, some to be music stations, and some to be teaching stations for the equipping of the saints for the work of the ministry. Amen? Amen? So this is my battle cry in Christian radio. We are equipping the saints to do the work of the ministry. Whether you're a music station, um, anytime you can open a mic or put something on a mic, um, we're equipping the saints for the work of the ministry. That's what we do. Um, we have this uh, tagline at K-Wave, you're home for worship and the word, but our unofficial one is to encourage, to educate, and to exhort. That's our unofficial. We just want to encourage people. We want to educate them in the word of God. We want to exhort them along the path that God has laid out for them. And so in all of my going out, um, this is what I do. I was hired at K-Wave back in 2014 uh, to be the community really. Well, actually, I was. this is funny. I was hired for promotions for K-Wave only. Uh, that's what I was told I was going to do. You're going to come in and just do promotions. And so the first day I got there, I went in, and, and Lance M., our, our GM, came in and said, I'm having a meeting. Uh, we have an agency coming in, big agency coming in. They, ad, they support or they, you know, um, represent uh, a lot of our advertisers, and I want you in on the meeting. I'm like, great. I'm going to go be a fly on the wall. So I grab my clipboard, and I go in, and I'm ready to take notes. And I sit down, and, and uh, the other guy's name was Lance. And from Stillwater Agency, I don't know if you guys know them, but he starts sharing all these things, and uh, Lance Emma takes one look at me, and he says, well, Mark, this sounds more like your area, and I'm like, what? And from that point on, I just took over the meeting. <laughs> I didn't mean to, but that was my background, and I just started asking all these questions and getting out, and, and Lance from Stillwater quickly turns his attention from Lance to me and starts sharing all this stuff, and I'm writing as fast as I can. And I just loved it. Well, at the end of the meeting, Lance said, okay, um, you're not just doing promotions for K-Wave. I'm going to have you do community relations, promotions for KSDW, for K-Wave Las Vegas, for K-Wave here. And I go, great. Do I get a raise? And he said, no. He said, no. But the value that comes from relationship, what he told me is, I want you out of the office. I want you out in the field. I want you out. So, um, when we're, if you're taking notes and you want to write anything down, how to begin, be consistent. This is huge. It's just like on radio, what Robert was talking about with, with uh, schedule, right? With the frequency of how often are you on? How you, people have to see your face. They need to see you. It doesn't, don't ever go in and say, here I am, okay, you know, advertise with me and do this with me and do that with me. No, no, just go out and be consistent. Build relationship. Start by giving. I always go with my hands open. What can I bless you with first? People love that. It's, it's I'm not here to get from you. I shared that a little bit with the pastors yesterday. Uh, when I'd go in, they all thought, oh, here he comes. He's going to ask me to be on the radio, or he's going to ask me to advertise my event. He wants money. Um, don't be that person. Be the person that says, hey, I realize you're a Christian organization. How can we bless you? Uh, I think you heard me say this before, and, and I know Robert stole my line. I came up with that, but he gave me credit yesterday. And that's, I'm your best friend with a megaphone, right? I can get to the ears that you can't. And, and I'm willing to do that for you. So how can I bless you? Look for commonality. Always look for commonality. You're going to go out, and sometimes you're going to be talking to Christians. Commonality is pretty easy when you're talking to Christians, right? It's Jesus. 
You don't ever have to go any further than that. Um, but with non-Christians, you can look for commonality. When I was in sales, I would go around and I would go to people's desks and I'd sit down and I'd start talking with them and I'd look on their desk. Are those your kids? How are your kids doing? What grades are they in? Oh, you like fishing. Oh, I like fishing too. Where have you been fishing? Where's your favorite place? Oh, what sports team? Oh, I see you've got, you know, the LA Rams or, you know, sorry, I guess the... Uh, What's the uh, New York Giants? Uh, <laughs> is, that, is that what I'm supposed to say here? <laughs> Philadelphia Eagles um, for Bill? Uh, Bill's not even in here. Broncos? Okay. <laughs> but you look for different commonalities, places that you can start a footing on. And you think of it like, I'm going to make a new friend. All right? So many people I would talk to say, I could never do what you do. I could never do that. And I'm like, what do you mean? Going and doing sales. This is when I was in sales. He'd be like, I could never do that. I go, what do you mean? When I walk through that door, I might have a best friend on the other side of that door. That's literally my attitude. Like, I'm going to go meet people because I could have a new best friend out there that I just haven't met him yet. And so when I go out, that's my attitude. Is I want to make friends. I want to find that commonality because even in my witness for Jesus Christ, I'm very relational. You build a friendship, and then you look into opportunities that you can speak life into. So looking for commonality, like-mindedness, purpose, yours and theirs. Find out where your goals align, and then set your expectations. Be clear in setting your expectations. Being more involved in the community will raise awareness of your station and ultimately promote your station in your area Get your logo out there on event flyers. I brought this because, do you guys all recognize this? you guys see it at all? I mean, the biggest words are be kind, but do you see anything else on there? It says Autism Speaks, right? Huge national organization. And right here on the back, along with great companies, big name companies, we got UPS, we got ABC Channel 7, Farmers Insurance, and you've got K-Wave. Okay, K-Wave's out there. It's on the logo, or the logo is, is on the t-shirt. It's on all their marketing materials. Whenever you look at an L.A. walk or an Orange County walk, even the Las Vegas walk and San Diego walk, you'll see a K-Wave logo, or in San Diego, we had our KSDW logo on the stuff. And the reason for that is just to raise awareness of your brand. Start small. Feature ministries on your programs. This is something I did. We have, and you guys are going to have to help me out with this because I wasn't sure. Um, the FCC requirement for commercial statements is that you have to serve the community, so you have to have so many hours per quarter. Um, is it the same for non-coms and low powers? LPs? Do you feature, do you feature them on your station? Do you feature uh, community stuff like PSAs that you do, and do you record it, and do you like, I mean, make record of it. Do you have to send it in quarterly or yearly? Or I forget how you report, but you know, you yes. It's not required of low power? Okay. Okay. Here's, here's the thing. I left it in here without finding that out because I wanted to say do it anyway. Do it anyway. Feature ministries that serve your community. So we have what we call the update program. It's Saturday from 10 to 10.30. And a lot of the interviews, I do them myself. But it's supposed to be serves your community. Well, what do ministries do? They serve our community. So I feature ministry after ministry after ministry. I go out and find ministries. I want to encourage you to do the same. Find local ministries that serve your community. Uh, pregnancy resource centers are great things to put on there. You know, Anything that can answer questions, anything about education is really good uh, for children. Um, anything that serves your community that is a ministry. And I'm going to get into some of those examples. Start small and feature ministries. Um, so Robert talked about this. I thought he was going to steal all my thunder in his little spiel when he was sitting up here just a minute ago. But um, network with Christian businesses. Uh, we have what's called the Barnabas Group in our area. Okay, they're, they're Christian businessmen. And what's great about the Barnabas Group is that they feature different ministries that they'll support. And they call Christian businessmen together. And, and they view, they do their quarterly meeting, and they view different ministries. And they'll decide who they want to promote 
so that they can support, they can come behind and support. So that's kind of easy pickings for me. I got that and I've got the network, which is a network of churches, but it's not the senior pastors. This is all ancillary ministries. Um, they come and they present at this and they make aware of this and they have a speaker at it. So look for these kind of meetings for ministries in your areas. I, I mentioned pastors meetings uh, last, last session. And I know some of you are in smaller areas and you might think they're not out there, but they're there. Other ministries, go to the different churches and say, what ministries are you involved in? Um, if I can go ahead and turn this on, Marshall, I'm going to start going through some of the slides. Do you recognize that guy? <laughs> Do you recognize the one not holding the microphone who's dressed really well? So yesterday I shared with you the event up at the state capitol when Franklin Graham came around. That's actually a picture from that. I had an opportunity to interview him as well as Channel 5 and Channel 7. <laughs> you know, like the big networks were there to interview him too. And here I am wearing my little patriotic t-shirt that has surfboards because I'm in California. So um, anyways, that was so... Samaritan's Purse is a great one. In any area, you can, you can do work with them. They'll gladly do call-in interviews that you can record, put on the air. Um, Samaritan's Purse, Operation Christmas Child. How many of you are involved in that in your churches, right? Doing the shoe boxes. That's a great thing to put on your radio station to get other churches involved and do an Operation Christmas Child. Uh, let's see. Uh, Glad Tidings India is another one. Anything that has to do with foreign missions. I'll still put them on, even though it doesn't fit the FCC requirement. I look for things like that. Exodus Cry is one that I'll, I'll tell you a little bit more about. You Turn for Christ. Uh, YWAM. YWAM is a great organization just to put out there. Are they a perfect organization? No. But what do they do? They send youth out into the world and, and increase their faith as well as share in missionary work. Uh, pregnancy centers and then save the storks. I'm going to go through a couple of slides and I'll explain them as we kind of go through. How many of you have heard of Pacific Justice League or Pacific Justice Institute? That's Brad Dacus. Uh, Brad has his little one minutes that you can grab too, um, talking about Christian rights. Uh, great organization. This is a picture of a pastor, uh, Joe and Kathleen Pettick, along with me and my wife at one of their big galas. Um, very involved with Brad Dacus. He does some great work um, in protecting Chris Christian liberties. This is another organization that actually Robert and I stumbled upon when he was back at K-Wave, and it's called Jesus VR. So it was virtual reality goggles where you're sitting uh, on, on a mountainside in Galilee watching Jesus do the Sermon on the Mount. And you're doing this. You're turning. And you're looking up, down, all around. I was actually at the Last Supper when I was watching this. I, I could be at the Last Supper looking around trying to identify which apostle was which. And, of course, Judas is always over in the corner going like this, right? <laughs> so he was an easy one to spot. Uh, but Jesus VR was just another organization that they, they told me they sent out uh, emails to 300 pastors in the Southern California area. Guess how many responses they got from pastors? Zero. You know who contacted them? K-Wave. And it wasn't me, it was Robert. I didn't get the email. Robert got it. And he contacted them. We had the guy come in. He was Catholic. The one who was the sales guy for them was. Um, so we talked to him and he was trying to get it into all these Catholic churches. We took one look at it. It is so true to scripture. We said, let's minister to this guy. Uh, his name was Andre. They said, let's minister to him and let's help him, and let's let people see this. So we featured it at a pastor's conference, um, and then a bunch of churches had him come and do this, the screening of it, uh, which is real fun. That's the previous picture, one with everyone. <laughs> everyone's sitting, so they run it simultaneously. So it's kind of fun, because everyone gets excited at the same time and starts cheering at the same time, and you get the, oh, at the same time when Satan comes on the scene and tempts Jesus in the wilderness. Pretty cool. Pray for Freedom. We did this with um, Vanguard University, and this was a rally. That one of the professors there uh, talks about human trafficking. And so here we are at the event. They've asked me to, oops, they asked me to come up and pray. They misspelled my name, but that's okay. Uh, prayers for the vulnerable. 
So I got to go in and pray with them. Wings of faith. I'm just showing you a variety of, of who is out there and just to kind of give you inspiration and ideas of, of what you can look for. Wings of Faith is an amazing missionary ministry uh, to Indian tribes, Native Americans. Sorry, Native Americans. Recant the Indian. Politically correct. Um, Indian, er, <laughs> Native American tribes in New Mexico and Arizona. Um, yeah. And here's... Conrad, who is standing by the plane that they use to get out there, uh, they fly right out to Winslow, Arizona, which was made famous by the Eagles in their, in their song. And uh, yeah, so they fly out there. They have distribution centers out there. They have them out here. And we got to come along and uh, not only help them on the radio, but we also got to fly out with them. Uh, that was really fun. I actually, this is a fun picture because right behind me, uh, with the sunglasses on is my assistant, Matt. And he's actually white knuckling it right there because they let me fly the plane. Uh, it was really fun. They go, you want to try and fly the plane? I go, absolutely. <laughs> go, I know where I'm going, right? Um, so they let me fly the plane for over an hour. Of course, the guy right next to me is a highly skilled pilot. And yeah, if anything happened, he would have just flipped a switch and took over. So I wasn't worried about it, but that was a lot of fun. Uh, so in one day, we flew from Riverside, um, out to Winslow, Arizona, went and visited a Navajo tribe, um, was able to talk with some people out there, see their ministry. What an amazing ministry. I cannot believe the poverty, the level of poverty 45 minutes from Flagstaff, Arizona, and how these people, it broke my heart. It broke my heart. So we've been supporters of Wings of Faith ever since. This is a really cool ministry. So this is uh, Kathleen and Rob, and they are from Plur Life Ministries. Plur stands for peace, love, unity, and respect. It is not a Christian, well, it's a Christian organization, but that's not a Christian phrase. That's the phrase that's used for those who are involved in big, huge raves, like the Daisy Festivals and all these things that happen all over the country. Uh, these guys have a ministry where they go out, they take an RV, and they go to the raves, like the festivals, and they buy tickets, they get a couple of tickets to the rave so that they are allowed to be there. And the moms, they got these moms that'll go in and they say, hey, who needs a mom hug? And they're there, they know these kids are blitzed out of their mind, usually on psychedelics and, and uh, different drugs and stuff. They go out there to minister, to keep them safe. They hand out these bracelets that say plurlife.com because bracelets are a huge thing in, in that um, genre. And then they hope that when the kids come to their senses, they'll look up the pure life, or plur life, thank you. Um, and they'll see the gospel message there. They set up their RV. They, they feed pancakes in the morning. They have places to recharge your cell phone if you need that. If you're lost, they set up, if you're lost, come here. You know. And they, they have blankets. They have water. They have rescued multiple young ladies from being victimized um, at these and all they do is go out and love on people. And I am. I get choked up just talking about it because of the love these guys have for uh, these young people who are at the raves who are just so vulnerable. They leave themselves vulnerable. I mean, Kathleen tells stories of walking into a group of guys that have a young lady that's very scantily dressed, surrounded by guys that are just, you know, all around her, and she walks right into the middle of them. While, while the guys are back praying, the moms go out, and they just watch. She walks in, oh, thank you guys so much for looking after her. I'll take her now, and wraps a blanket around her, hugs her, and walks right out. Um, they have story after story. It's a great, uh, great ministry to get involved in if you want to look it up. Uh, Plur Life is, is the name of it. Uh, I encourage you. They are in California, but they go all over the country. So, uh, This is CityNet, helping homeless neighbors. Uh, we do a lot of work with Brad and Chelsea here. Um, we were delivering food. In fact, here, this is me delivering food in Anaheim, right up by Disneyland at a motel. We'd take hot meals to this encampment because these were COVID vulnerable. So it was anyone who had health issues that, were, that lived on the street, they put them up in, in this Motel 6, and then we would take hot meals to them. They also had a huge bus center that was uh, uh, changed into a housing area that we would take meals to. Uh, U-Turn for Christ. I think most of you guys know who U-Turn for Christ is. Uh, they look for support from all over the country too. 
They're a great ministry to feature. You can send people to your turn for Christ. It's out in Paris, California, but people do come from all over the country. Uh, this was when we were at Harvest. Harvest is another one. I mean, I know Greg Laurie reaches out to lots of people for support, but this is kind of our setup at Harvest. Um, you guys know all about that. That's coming up this weekend, actually. As soon as I get back, we're in harvest mode. That's Brian St. Peter's. He is the promotional guy that we work with at Harvest. Uh, Saddleback, we did a bunch of grocery distributions with Saddleback, the church Saddleback. Uh, they were looking for partners, and Saddleback doesn't usually look for partners. They usually say, oh, we're going to do it all ourselves. Um, but they were looking for partners, and we said, hey, we'd love to part partner with you in our community. Um, not alone, or you're not alone, uh, helps spread the good news. This is a uh, ministry that works in India a lot. Uh, here we are, that's Lance, Emma, and Matt, and I. We were out at the Murrieta Conference Center with uh, Johnny and Friends. So this was their family camp, one of their family camps. Uh, we do a lot of stuff with Johnny and Friends. This is that uh, trellis ministry I was telling you about. These are some of the lead pastors that I've gotten to know through them because we're helping with the, the unity model that they're creating and helping in the homeless space. So what they've done is they've gone into Costa Mesa and they've gone to the city, they have great relationships with the city, and they said, how can we, as the pastors of evangelical churches in Costa Mesa, how can we help you in your three biggest initiatives? And they say, what are your three biggest initiatives? The first one is the housing crisis or homelessness, homeless neighbors. Second one is education right? Education. And then the third one was um, drug addiction. And so they've stepped into all three of these phases with the city saying, we as the church, the one church, want to help you as the city. And the city's welcoming them with open arms. And they said, know this, when we help you, we are going to proclaim the gospel. Not, hey, can we? It's no, we are going to proclaim the gospel. Believe me, the city's like, yes, thank you. We will send people to you. And they do. They send people to the churches. Uh, you might recognize this young man. We, I heard his name come up yesterday. That's Brendan Beeler. Uh, but this is with Deborah Tours, who heads up the Horizon Christian Pregnancy Center, or Horizon Pregnancy Center. Um, they do a lot of great work. They work with Save the Storks. So this is a co-branded um, van that they have that Save the Storks has set them up with. Uh, again, Save the Storks is a national ministry. Horizon Pregnancy Clinic is just Huntington Beach. So Save the Storks is another one doing great work. They support local um, pregnancy centers all over the country. And then we're about, yeah, this is the last slide. So this is Exodus Cry, and I think I alluded to them, but Exodus Cry is in the space of human trafficking, um, but they're in a different space in that they ha they're trying to change legislation. Like they're going after the root of the problem with pornography and saying that pornography is what is an enabler for human trafficking. It creates, uh, it creates the need or what do, they, what do they say when you, they, it creates the market for human trafficking. And so they've gone after Pornhub, which is the largest uh, distributor, distributor, distributor of pornography in the United States and possibly worldwide. They have gone after them for age verification and consent verification um, of anyone that appears on any of their videos. They have made Pornhub take down two thirds of all their content. And also because they got the, the article published in the New York Times, um, MasterCard and Visa has pulled out from any support of this site. And, and so huge blow. He, and uh, this, is, um, this is Helen Taylor. She's a representative in our area. Again, na nationwide, they used to be in St. Louis, Missouri. They just moved their headquarters out to California, Northern California, but they're again, nationwide. And she said that when we first went after uh, Pornhub, which is their Goliath, the giant, they said they were laughing at us. Um, but God miraculously has taken down one more giant, right? I said, that's what my God does. He takes down giants. So again, just another great organization. They're called Exodus Cry. They're just coming out right now. They have a petition, their new initiative, which I was interviewing her for. This was just a week and a half ago. 
um, is they have a, uh, why am I just blanking on these words? You know, you sign it to get people to do things. <laughs> Petition. <laughs> yes, petition. <laughs> Sign it to get people to do things, right? Wow, Mark. Uh, it's been a long week. No. Uh, they have a petition going right now on their website that uh, for age verification for anyone to view. You know how you have to be 21 to buy alcohol in the country? You have to be 18 to buy tobacco, and you can be two and a half and get on a porn site. Um, so they're saying there's got to be age verification. There's got to be ways of doing that. And so they're pressing for that legislation is the next thing. Why are we not protecting our children? Uh, they said that they, pr they did their whole presentation to the parliament in Canada who was thinking about legalizing prostitution. And not only have they not legalized prostitution, they went the other route and they set some serious, severe consequences for those caught not, not the people who are being prostituted, but the ones behind it. And so they're going after, they're trying to change things. They said they're using um, uh, the same techniques that were used to end the transatlantic slave trade. You know, they're going to the government. They're going to try and change policy. And it's just a great organization. So I'm sorry, I went on a little bit long about that, but this is something that Man, I can't believe that God brought them, God brought them through our Instagram account. Uh, we were contacted by um, a young lady who lives in Montana who works for Exodus Cry saying, hey, would you show this on your Instagram? And she sent us a short video. And so my social media assistant said, Mark, I don't know how to answer this. What do you want to do? And so I said, I just messaged her back and said, hey, can you call me right now? Here's my, here's my number. She called me within 10 minutes. We started talking, we had this interview by the end of the week. Um, because I said, yes, we align perfectly with this. Um, and so I also put her in touch with Ryan Reese. I think they're gonna do an interview as well. Uh, but just being able to have your name out there and just be able to look for these different, um, different organizations that are like-minded, right? They're serving the body of Christ. Those are all Christian organizations. And I think I need to speed up a little because I'm running out of time. But I have nonprofit organizations. I'm just going to run through these pretty quick, and they're pretty self-explanatory. I've done so much work with Autism Speaks in so many different walks that I'm just going to click through these slides pretty quickly. Uh, this is me up on stage out at the Rose Bowl. You can see right in the top corner it says bowl with the rose above it. Um, that was our booth. These are some of the leaders for the LA area in Southern California. The one in the middle is the LA Regional, and the one on the right is the Walk Committee Chair. Uh, this is what the event looks like. It 55,000 people. And here I am, little K-Wave, and I know most of you, when I said that to someone, was it you, James? You said little K-Wave. <laughs> but I mean, comparatively in our market, ABC News was the other anchor, or was the other, their morning anchor and I shared the stage and co-hosted this event. And it's just like, wow, is right. Um, Smokey the Bear showed up. <laughs> ABC Channel 7 News was there. Uh, we got a, a certificate and recognition that hangs in our lobby now. Uh, this is the Anaheim Walk. We were at Anaheim Stadium. We do that every year. And when I go back, I've got these lo lined up. This year, we're going to be at Dodger Stadium and Anaheim Stadium. Uh, this was in Las Vegas. We did a walk out in Las Vegas. Uh, that's my assistant, Matt getting the prize. This was last year at the Rose Bowl, we did a drive-through, uh, drive-through walk, which was interesting. So K-Wave was out there. We had the most interesting booth, and that's why Channel 5 set up right next to us. And we got this shot. There we are, being crazy, right? Just anything we can do in the community to, to it's not about getting the recognition. It's about being there for the families. Uh, and that's why we set it all up. We were trying to ever entertain every kid that came by in a car. Every one of them was like this on the window, right? We couldn't, we couldn't approach them. Uh, we do work with Special Olympics. Uh, that's, this was a political year, so all the politicians came out. Right behind me to my, uh, to my left in that is Todd Spitzer. He's the, the district DA. So he was there. We had a couple of state Congress 
people there, and, and it was awesome. And I'm emceeing this as, the, as all the um, uh, different teams go by. This is us at Special Olympics with some of the athletes and the law enforcement that shows up from the sheriff department. Uh, we also work with bounty hunters and stormtroopers. Um, and we work with the good side too. We work with some of the rebels. This is NAMI, National Alliance for Mental Illness. And again, I said national. These are people you can get on board with, boy. These two people run NAMI for our whole area and they're both Christians. NAMI is not a Christian organization but they reach out to everyone. And they, they, when we did the interview, they're like one in three people has a mental illness. So look to your left and look to your right and maybe point your finger at you. <laughs> uh, this, is, this is Power of One Foundation. Again, not a Christian organization, but guess who runs it? Christians. Uh, that's Andre, he's, he's a Christian. Uh, there's Andre and Shawnee giving us an award because we helped them distribute I think it says on the slide how many thousands of pounds of food uh, that they gave out, we, helping over 400,000 families. It's like, here we are working with the Red Cross. Like I said, we did food drives, blood drives, and toy drives. Jimmy John's came alongside of us to help us help the Red Cross, and they also introduced us to Lifestream. So again, networking, this is a different blood bank. Um, find different blood banks. They, are, they really want to help your community. They really need the blood. Um, here's the Boys and Girls Club and the Wooden Floor Organization, which helps kids in poverty. It helps them get a, a leg up. Um, and so we're, this is do, us doing the Spark of Love toy drive, which I'll get to in just a minute. This is uh, Jamboree Housing, non-Christian organization. It helps low-income housing families, and they have youth programs. I put them in touch with Young Life a Christian organization. I said, have you heard of them? No. You need to get involved with Young Life. They'll come to your property and run these youth things. They're a Christian organization. They're all great. Send them. We would love to know them. So being able to network in that way. And then local schools. This is one of my biggest supporters. This is Lisa Solomon, wonderful lady in the uh, probably the most uh, poverty-stricken part of Santa Ana. And she just loves her community. And she loves us because we work with her and do her community stuff too. We've, we've done food drives at her school. We give her toys to give out. And she's just a wonderful Christian principal who loves K-Wave. And that's the end of that one. Let me see, I've got one more, I think. Actually, two more. How much time do I have? Am I supposed to be gone by now? I got five minutes. Okay, I'm gonna do two slides from each of the other ones. The next one is our first responders. We take care of our first responders. Um, not for any kind of accolades. We say we're not going to post any pictures of anything we do with you. If you post it on your website, we will repost it. But it's very important getting in with first responders, uh, like here's Santa Ana Police Department. Uh, there they are at K-Wave Building. We let them do some training in our facility. Uh, Huntington Beach PD, we go and take care of them. We bring the in and out truck for them just to bless them. And we have a, a booth that we give away books and resources to them as well. I got a free helicopter ride out of it, which was pretty cool. Um, got to go up in the police helicopter. Orange County Sheriff's Department, that's at the Special Olympics again, but uh, there's Irvine PD at the Special Olympics. Here's our local fire, and then we do the Spark of Love toy drive with the OC Fire Authority. That's Chief Fennessy who heads up the OC Fire Authority. There they are in the K-Wave studios giving us a plaque. Military chaplains. Guys, the way to get in with first responders is through their chaplains. They all have chaplaincy programs. Chaplains would love to work with you, and they can tell you the events that they're doing in the area. And then uh, veterans of foreign war, we do work with them too, which is a blessing. Those guys are awesome. And then last, I'm going to show you just our community events. If I can get rid of this. Come on. Where's my, where's my thingy? There it is. Boop. And show... Got one last one for you. Uh, I hope I'm giving you guys ideas. Last one is our community events. Come unity, yay, because I'm the unity guy. Yeah, that's what that is. But wait for this. Oh, I didn't tell you, Marshall, that we had sound on that bite. I'm sorry, Marshall. Let me try again. 
I forget. Oh, they say spark of love. Okay. This is our warehouse uh, full of toys that come in before we sort them. Here's Subaru came in by, coming by our area, our, our distribution center with ABC Channel 7 in the background to give toys to get photo ops. Coming to us. This is uh, the haul that we got. Woo, look at all those stuffed animals. Here I want you to look at Spark of Love, Orange County Fire Authority, and K-Wave. Just again, getting your brand out there. That we're helping in the community. Here's uh, part of the toy collections. That was a Stuff a Bus event. Um, there's Phil, my assistant, all the way to the right with Minnie Mouse. Uh, here's community 501c3s come in and we give them toys, but we also ask them to volunteer. So we get to know them and build relationships with different 501c3s. Food distributions. Here we are in the Calvary Chapel parking lot with the K-Wave building in the background. Uh, doing food distributions, we got to work with uh, State Supervisor Michelle Steele. Um, doing different food distributions. That's Power of One. That's the back parking lot at Calvary Chapel. Look at the cars just lined up. Uh, that's my assistant Jessica. She made me put that slide in there. <laughs> and over by the K-Wave booth, right in the corner, you'll see Lance MR. He, he has taken to this, and every Saturday, he's out there at like 6 in the morning uh, to, to set up and help set up for these food drives. He loves it. Here we are at Carolina's, a, a restaurant in Garden Grove that said they wanted to give food to the community. They contacted us through the Chamber of Commerce and said, hey, will you help us promote it? So absolutely. These three ladies, Shell Station, they, their family owns a Shell Station down the street, and they love K-Wave. And they're like, I didn't know K-Wave was going to be here. That's my son, sporting the gear, and Garden Grove PD. Uh, you might recognize this guy. That's Pastor John Randall. He came out to one of the walks for a pregnancy center that we did down in San Clemente. And John was a, youth, was a, was a kid in my youth group <laughs> years and years and years ago. So John and I go way back. This is a K-Wave booth, what we set up at the Power of One Foundation when they were doing a, a food and candy giveaway. And then this is the one event K-Wave does a year. It's our GLOW event. It stands for God's Love Overcomes. And it's our Halloween alternative. And just to give you an idea of what it looks like, get huge bounce houses. Tommy Cota's up on the stage pro proclaiming the gospel. Uh, this is what kind of it looks like. We do all these face painting, all these games. Uh, dunk tank, that's always a favorite cotton candy, just people come from all over our community to attend this. Uh, big games, and that's what it looks like. That's my last slide. Uh, it's an awesome event. What I do is I, I invite groups that we work with to come and have a booth there, and I give them a shout out on the stage. This year, Special Olympics will be there, NAMI will be there, um, uh, uh, Autism Speaks will be there. All these organizations that I work with We'll have a booth there, and we'll get to share with the community what we do. So this is what I'm encouraging you guys to do. To foster relationships, start small, be consistent, look for commonalities, and go out there and promote your, your brand and tell them, I'm your best friend with a megaphone. That's all I have. If we want, have time for questions, I'm sorry I went long. You do not get to ask a question. <laughs> Anybody? I just wanted to thank Mark for coming out from K-Wave, doing the two sessions, uh, really good. You know, here's the thing about a conference. Sometimes you think, oh, that session, it's got, you look at the title, it's not gonna mean anything. And then you get something out of it. Everything that we, every session, every talk, we always get something out of it, something that we're gleaning out of it. Thank you, and tell your boss, Lance, thank you. No problem. Okay, let me get to my list. I know you've been dying to say, is he going to finish his list? I am. And then, the, and then we're going to have Lloyd up. Okay, so we started out with how, how do you sound? Your website. How's your programming? Take a look at your programming. We didn't really get into music, probably another... Next year, we'll kind of do a little bit more music. In fact, I'm, I wanted to do a session at some point on how I bring in new music to the station. And I can show you, actually, the method that I do that. Um, I usually do that on Fridays, Fridays, even though we have our camp and I 
um, kind of gone a lot more, but about once a month we're bringing in new music into the station. And there are free services like MPE, uh, but honestly, um, we get most of our music from iTunes. It's, remember we used to buy whole CDs and then rip them? Now it's I pick a song that I like. You know, If Crowder has a new song and I want to add that Crowder, it's only 99 cents, right? When I first came into radio, all music was free. <laughs> that was so long ago. They would, send us, they would send us stacks and stacks and cases of music. They don't do that anymore. And so you have to be creative in how you get your music. Maybe we'll do that for another conference. And then liners and shorts. Automation, we'll have to get back to that. If you have an automation, let me just say it this way. Maureen, how many hours were you in your station before we switched you? Seventy, eighty hours a week? Okay. Oh, my gosh, that's a long time. And we brought in Station Playlist into her, and now how many hours are you? Just programming what you did before. Four or five now? Yeah. Could be less than that. Yeah. So, yes. The, the thing that Alan said to me is, Ron, thank you for giving my wife back to me because she would be in that studio the entire time. And I'm like, you don't have to do that. There are new softwares. Things are cheaper today. There's it Again, I sound like a broken record. It, it's not like it used to be. Radio is different today. Equipment is different today. The technology is different today. So you shouldn't be spending that much time, here's my point, in the studio. You shouldn't have to do that. There are alternatives because I would rather have Maureen do community stuff and promotion and all this than sitting there and going, let me fix the clock and bring this guy in. And do, I, that's, that's the hard thing about radio. So that's automation. If you want any information, you can talk to me um, uh, about automation. Uh, compliance, we talked about billboards. Here's my last one, ready for the slide. Uh, yard signs, and I, I, I wanted to bring one up, but I couldn't figure out how to bring it on the plane. Um, but that's a yard sign. It's a little 18 inch by 24. Are, are you ready? Buildasign.com, buildasign.com. You go on, you build that. You, it's a little template. Um, now, this is when we first launched it, but we have other ones, blue ones and stuff. And we buy these um, in a 50-pack. Um, and obviously, you can tell our branding from our table. Everything's neon green. By the way, that's branding. We'll have to, Robert, do a whole thing on branding and promotional next time. You want to stay with that. Whatever you choke, K-Wave is blue. Whatever it is, you stay with that and that's your branding. Well, these are the cheapest way to get your message in your community. So if you've got the pizza parlor, and he's a businessman in your church, but he's not gonna run any ads on your station, you can say, hey, would you mind putting that in the window? And for the most part, they will. Um, and so you can get your station <laughs> all around the community with a yard sign that's going to cost you 100 bucks for a 50-pack, depending on the sales that they run. And that, that website, they run deals all the time. You Just remember, when you get the signs, you don't get the stakes. You have to buy them separately. But that is by far the easiest way to get your message out. And then I love T-shirts because if you're in the community, you give people a T-shirt, and they wear your shirt in town that says whatever your frequency is and your website name on the back. So um, I wanted to thank all the servants here at Old Bridge. Again, Marshall, thank you for, I mean, a sound guy is so valuable. Thank you and your wife. Thank you for doing that. Lloyd, thank you for all the staffing. It is a pleasure to have nice coffee. It just, it, re it really is. It's it's nice. I love being a part of Calvary Chapel that we walk into your home and it's just like our home. And that is a blessing. And I think a lot of people miss, miss that. And um, 
Bill and I were just talking about how this conference was a little different this year. It was really hard to put together for whatever reason, whatever the enemy was doing, and that Wuhan COVID from last year couldn't do it. It was just hard to put it together. It wasn't coming together. Robert's like, Ron, what are we doing? <laughs> what are we doing? It was back and forth with him, and I'm like, uh, I guess we'll, we'll pull the trigger, go ask Lloyd if we can do it in, in Old Bridge. Yes, trying to get guys, but... Uh, Bill said something out there. It was nice. This was more of an encouragement conference than a technical conference. And I think sometimes, and we know this, God knows what we need. And especially through the COVID and all of what we've been going through, what you're about to go through, right? We just need encouragement right now. We're in the trenches. We're on the enemy's territory. So I'm thankful for everybody uh, that came out. Thank you guys for coming out, spending your time to be encouraged. Um, and uh, we'll let you know soon. We're trying.